brought to you by Lister Pros TV, streaming from Tempe, Arizona. And we're live in five, four, three, two, one. Outstanding. Hey guys, Jordan Nelson here, host of Real Estate Pros on Lister Pros TV, and today we're in our Tempe, Arizona studio with John Trojan, Realty Executive. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy well, day thanks joining for me. for having me. Awesome. So for those watching that don't know who you are, we'll give you an opportunity to introduce yourself. Okay. At you or at the camera? At me. So we're talking here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My name is John Trojan. I'm with Realty Executives in Scottsdale. I'm a 12-year veteran of the real estate world here in the Scottsdale uh, area. Scottsdale, Phoenix, Paradise Valley, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I'm, really, uh, I'm really happy that I was invited here today. This is a great venue. And I believe you said 160 shows so far. Getting into it. I think I want to start throwing, I need to start keeping track, but yeah. <laughs> Been about uh, a little over a year now, so. Good, good. 160, the best one yet, right, John? No. Well, could be. <laughs> awesome, so we know that uh, Real estate agents can have all kinds of different focuses and niches when it comes to the Correct. real estate industry. So talk to us about yours. Well, um, in the initial stages of getting into the business, I think we should kind of sure, touch sure, on sure. that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my analogy is that when you get into the business initially and you're trying to break ground, you work a lot of different areas, you do a lot of different things, you test a lot of different things. And over the years, I've done a lot of testing and I know the market areas that I enjoy working in. I know that uh, the areas are of like-minded people, which I think is really important. You have to love what you're doing in order to, as we do, bust it out, you know, seven days a week, oh, 365 yeah, yeah. days of the year for the most part. And uh, so I, I have, over the years, I've done a lot of work with first-time home buyers. I've done a lot of work with uh, retirement, uh, relocation. I've done a lot of work with... Um, renters who have decided it's time to get into the real estate world rather than continuing to pay somebody else's rent, right. essentially, you know, uh, you know, their bank notes on whatever their investment properties are. And I've also worked with investors. I had the fortune slash misfortune of getting into the real estate world at exactly the same time that the market crashed. Oof. So it was very a very difficult transition. I had to rethink the business, had to relearn and I think during that relearning process, I really began to appreciate the niche market that I was able to create. And that area is transitioning me now into the active 55 communities of the Phoenix, Scottsdale, and surrounding areas. Interesting little statistic. Uh, active 55 plus generally means uh, the professionals of the world or those that have saved and they have uh, invested correctly, they're at a point in their lives where they sit and they figure out, what does my life look like between now and 20 years or 30 years from now, or how long will I survive? And how do I want to live during that, during that time frame? Where do I want to live? What do I want to do? What is my life going to look like? So I discovered active 55 plus communities. And part of that little, little, um, trivia do you know how many golf courses are in maricopa county oh man if i had to uh, just take a guess because it's oh, an wow. interesting it's gonna number. be way off i'm gonna say uh i want to say like 118 or something but i i think <laughs> i'm way off you are by over 100 but that's okay yeah 285 oh, right wow so basically you know we have five million people here in maricopa county right and we've got a lot of different communities that are incorporated into that five million. But I'm gonna just take a little gentleman's bet here and say, I will guarantee you that within two miles of wherever you live, there's a golf course. So that being said, I love to play golf. I am very athletic. I was always very athletic. I've transitioned into golf because it's physically an easier game than the other sports I used to play. But even more importantly, it's a great office. The, you know, a golf course is a great office. It's a great opportunity to meet people, to really get to know them on an intimate level. And they conversely get to know me on, a, on an intimate level. And not unlike your business, it's a relationship-based business. Right. It's a great opportunity for me to figure out what your likes are, what your dislikes are, 
what your tendencies are. Um, I even get a good feel for how much money you want to spend when you actually do make the move that you make. So that was a really easy transition for me, and I've had uh, very, very good su success with this new niche market, new strategy. And really, truthfully, it's just another arrow in my, you know, in my quiver, basically. It sure. gives me an opportunity to broaden my spectrum. Where, you know, who am I going to sell to? When am I going to sell to them? Who am I going to list for? And it's been a lot of fun in, in learning that market, and it's been a tremendous amount of fun being able to enjoy all those 285 golf courses. So out of all the 285 golf courses, which one is your favorite? Favorite in uh, Maricopa County? Yeah. Boy, that's a tough question. Um, there are six golf courses at a community that my wife and I lived in for 12 years, and mm -hmm. I will tell you that, in my opinion, the number one golf course there is called Chiricahua. It's in Desert Mountain. It's at the very top. Oh, yeah. We, we were just in uh, – we shot a video in Desert Mountain, like ridiculous uh, views over there. And Unbelievable. It's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. an amazing community. Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, uh, Chiricahua, which is at the very, very top of the Desert Mountain properties, mm -hmm. to me is the most spectacular uh, view golf course, which is a little intimidating, you know, if you've never played it before. Um, you, you go there and you go, oh my gosh, where, where, first of all, let me look at the view. And then second of all, where am I going to hit my shot? However, the good news in that is if you decide to live there and I can make that happen for you, if you'd yeah. like. <laughs> I'm sure you could. Those, those houses are, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah oh, amazing. Exactly. Homes. Everything's custom in there and it's really, really a beautiful place to be. And again, we were there for 12 years and we were members at the golf club and, mm -hmm. That was a great ride for 12 years. It was wonderful. Um, but the point is, the, um, the, the the folks that, you know, live there and appreciate everything that they have there, the view is one thing, but the lifestyle, I think, is the more important. These are all people who have done extremely well in their lives, and they know exactly what they want. They know what their lives want to look like. And, you know, I like to I like to listen to what they tell me because they leave crumbs that are very beneficial. Sure. Let's just put it that way. So that being said, that's one segment of the market. I still very much enjoy all the other segments. Uh, nothing makes me happier than to have a client, a past client, call me and say, my youngest daughter is looking to get into real estate and we want you to represent them. That tickles me beyond laughter. I think I think that's the biggest compliment in the business. So are uh, a lot of your your business drivers in 2018 referrals the bulk of. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and the good news in that is that I've done a lot of transactions. Um, I my net total or my gross total is somewhere between 80 and 84 million dollars in the last 12 years that I've done personally. I don't, I didn't at the time have a team. I didn't have any you know, back office support. It was all just me. And the nice thing about that is that through it all, I worked really hard. I got the deals done for people. They've never forgotten how hard I worked and they've never forgotten the fact that I either made them a lot of money or I made them some money. Mm -hmm. And they continue to refer me like on a, I won't say on a weekly basis, but you know, every, every month that goes by, mm -hmm. I can almost assure myself that I'm going to have somebody that's being referred. Yeah. I mean, that that's important as a real estate agent to sustain your business, but that also speaks to your level of service and how you pride yourself in serving your clients. Because if you're not doing a good job there, they definitely would not refer. Why would they? Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. And th that lends itself to my previous experience in life. I spent 28 years in, um, in the, the retail world. I was a general manager of a, an 18 store group that, um, we did automotive repair, automotive, you know, we did tires, wheels, uh, suspension, brakes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I handled 18 different locations. And in that, if you're not a customer service oriented person, you could never survive because it's just, it's problematic. Every day is a problem. You know, you start your day at six o'clock in the morning and the very first phone call you get is probably not a good one. So I spent 28 years doing that, and I think that groomed me for this business, you know, the real estate business, right. because it's it's a very personal business. It's a very emotional business. And people, you can't ignore 
the signals that people are giving you if they're distressed, if they're uh, you know, if they're if they're coming to the end of their patience with a situation, not necessarily with the realtor or um, the the realtor on the other side, perhaps perhaps it's something that's going on in their lives that's creating a huge amount of stress. Uh, this happens a lot in relocation, where people uh, their their lives are being completely uprooted, and uh, let's say the husband has to leave. You know, he's leaving to go, let's say, to Seattle, Washington, and the rest of the family's got to stay behind. That puts a huge, huge amount of stress on the wife and possibly the children. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that typically get left taking care of everything, the packing, dealing with uh, the real estate portion of the show, you know, the all of the paperwork. Um, it, it gets highly emotional. And I believe that's at, at that time, that's when I really need to take my job seriously and make sure that... I'm diffusing things that don't need to become big problems simply by communication. And I believe that my com the communication skills are very strong and that I can get people through those things. And partly because I've been through all that. My wife and I have transitioned across the country, uh, literally from the state of Florida now to the state of Arizona and all points in between as part of my work. So therefore, we get it. And she knows what it's like to be left behind. And... Uh, I know what it's like for her to have to get let behind. So therefore, I can relate to people and I can understand I've been there, I've done that. I know the things to say and do to help so that it's stress less and so that it's seamless. I think those are two important things. Absolutely, and, and another important portion of your job as a mm -hmm. real estate agent is how you market your listing. So talk to us a little bit about how you market your listings for your clients. Well, and, and that's really important. And, and I, I want to start with a, a, a compliment. Uh, I saw Lister Pros for the first time five weeks ago, and I was totally blown away by the photography. Um, so number one, <laughs> I will use Lister Pros for all of my HD walkthroughs. I will use my or use Lister Pros completely for drone video. I, I'm a firm believer in aerial view. And the thing that I loved the most was um, the quality of the photography on the twilight shoots. And I love to do twilight shoots. Uh, to me, there's nothing that highlights a home better than a twilight shoot. Right. And I guess I, I'll ask you this question, being that we're here and we're talking sure, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, voiceovers, are you guys doing voiceovers yeah, on we, the videos? Yeah, we do uh, voiceovers depending on, on the project and how uh, the customer. We've done some where they'll just do it on voice, but we'll also do it at the property if the agent meets us. On a walkthrough? Yeah, on a walkthrough. Nice. You can be on front of the camera. Right, you can, right. hey, this is right. uh, John, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, your intro and a little bit about the property. And then we right. kind of, you know, voice over the yeah, yeah. part of it, but we'll give you some FaceTime on the intro. So let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. then. Have you seen Realty Executives TV? Have you seen that, that mm -hmm. format, the digital magazine? I'm not sure if I've I may or may not, but I'm, I'm well, not going to say I have. This is the additional marketing piece that I love about Realty Executives. This was developed about two years ago by the two owners of the division that I work uh, with. And how it works, we have a digital magazine. People mm -hmm. can go online and, uh, you know, you click your mouse and the page turns, and you can see all of our inventory that's currently listed below a million dollars and above a million dollars. And the only distinction between the two is that everything over a million dollars gets a professional voiceover. Mm. So that there's, not only is the video rolling, but somebody's telling you what you're yeah. looking at, which I think is a very, very cool thing. Um, I do it even under a million dollars. I don't have a problem with it. I think it's a really great way. It's just another, another layer of the marketing. Sure. Okay, so that being said, those are the things that I do. Um, I also do a print, which I know it's a dinosaur, but you know people like to see listing uh, listing couples love to see a what we call a coffee table magazine, a luxury magazine with their home in it on page sixty seven or, mm. or whatever. I'm not sure how effective that is because there's not a, a huge number of people that are in their house looking at their coffee table sure. magazine. And I don't know how many of those actually meet the eye. I don't know how many people actually. It's hard to quantify. You know, you can put out a, you know, 10,000 publications. How many people are reading those? You know, you don't know for sure. However, there are some really high-end magazines that I'm a firm believer in. 
and one that I that I've used over the years is uh, Cigar Aficionado magazine. Mm. The other is Wine Spectator magazine. And a dear friend of mine is the marketing rep for the West Coast, and I get the opportunity to to get really great placement in those magazines, and I get. Ama- amazingly, I get calls from people wow. that have seen us in that magazine. They've seen my listings in that magazine. And then there's a couple of other avenues where I think you'd agree with this. Arizona, or particularly Phoenix, Scottsdale areas, are huge on resorts. I publish in um, several of the major resorts, Kirlin being one, the Biltmore being another, um, the Four Seasons up in North Scottsdale. Um, the, my same marketing guy does a magazine that is in every room in every one of those resorts. It's a directory for a guest so they can pick and choose what restaurant they might want to go to, what events they might want to go to, like spring, yeah, spring yeah. training, for instance. They, they get a full breakdown of the schedules for their favorite teams is in that magazine, and I'm in that magazine. So I think that's a really good way to promote. If you're my client and you, you want your product out there for the masses all the people that come in you know during the season tourism by the way is our number one economic boost in the in the state of Arizona not everybody realizes that but we are all about tourism here so how do you get to the tourists you give them something in their in their hotel room that is a a guide and it's a step between the guide and the concierge when they decide they want to go ahead and book things and of course, who do you think I've already had conversations with? But the concierge in those three locations that I market in, because I want them to have a a one on one relationship with me. So that if somebody says, "Well, you know, we really want to look at some real estate here. Who should we talk to?" Well, I'd like to be f- first of mind in a situation like mm-hmm. that. So by getting to know the people that are working at the concierge concierge stations, I get the first opportunity to talk to the people that are curious about the real estate market and that being said it doesn't mean that they're ready right then and there but I think it gives them a really good idea of the costs of the real estate what they can buy for their money and more importantly if they're leaving from Arizona after having done all that and they're going back to a colder climate which is typical in the winter here uh, be it you know Pacific Northwest Midwest or the the Northeast all those areas are cold all those areas are probably snow covered. Right. Yeah. So uh, the last memory I want of for them to have is that realtor that we worked and how nice he was taking us to all these beautiful places. And oh, by the way, you know, I'd really like to live in that Spanish flavored home in Paradise Valley. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of the broad spectrum of of what I do and how I do it. It's relationship building for sure. It it gets people comfortable with me on a one to one basis. Call me anytime. I don't have a problem with taking phone calls. I'm not the kind of guy that, uh, you know, uh, you know. there's 100 texts waiting for me or 100 voicemail messages. I pick up my phone. Mm-hmm. I talk to people. And if they want to they wanna find uh, more information about me without talking to me, uh, my website is golfpropertiesaz.com. And if you can't yeah, remember easy, that, right? yeah. johntrojan.com. Nice. <laughs> I make it so simple. To, yeah. re, you know, to, to you reach out. You must have locked those down a while ago. I that did. Nice. I did. And I think that's important. I, you know, in our industry, t- talking about marketing, it's the key words are so critical to how much of your message actually gets out there, you know, without getting clustered in somebody else's marketing. So what I've learned over the years in, the di- in digital marketing and in um, social media is mm-hmm. that the more keywords you use that are in direct relationship to the business that you do and the, the various things that you do perhaps a little bit differently than you know the 64,000 other agents in the valley that's how many there are by the way that's a right, right, a stat right. you can you know you can look up is to be a little bit different be be unique and allow the keywords to bring people to my information Right. So they get to know me behind the scenes, get to see my bio, get to see my education, get to know behind the scenes what John Trojan's all about. Right. And you, you brought up a point that there's so many realtors oh, in the, yes. the Phoenix Val- or Phoenix area alone, 64,000 you 64, mentioned. 64,000 in Maricopa County. So why do, why do people choose to work with you, John? I'd say because I've separated myself from those 64,000 others. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, besides that, if you want to look at um, if, a, if a client or a prospective buyer wanted to look at reviews, they're all available. They're not only on my site, they're on Zillow, on Redfin, on Realtor.com, they're all there. And these are true uh, reviews from clients that I've done work for, and they're happy to talk about how good the relationship was, how good their purchases were, how quick their homes got sold, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's really important to be able to separate myself from everybody else is to have good, solid background um, as well as the, you know, $80 million worth of real estate that I sold. Right. You know, the pictures are all there. Um, it's all real stuff. You know, <laughs> there's no, you can't make that stuff up. You mm -hmm. know, you have to post what is yours. Otherwise, the system won't allow you to do it. Sure. So it, it just gives, it, it, it gives me a, um, a break from everybody else, a clean break. In, in the country western world, we would call that, um, there's a term for it, um, separation from the herd. Oh, gotcha, yeah. Right. And I believe that's what my marketing does for me. I believe that's what my, my life attitude is. If it's not good for you, it's not good for me. Mm -hmm. And by having that uplifted attitude, the win-win, and I'm in this thing for you. I'm here to achieve your goals. That's how everybody that I've ever worked with or for gets who I am. That's what we're going to do. And we are going to stick to the plan, and we are going to get this thing done, and we're going to get it done in the time frame that you want to get it done in. Awesome. That's me. Awesome, John. Well, if somebody watching this is interested in, in having you represent them as a buyer or seller, sure. how do people get a hold of you? Well, we, you can find me at johntrojan.com. You could find me at golfpropertiesaz.com, or you can call me at 480-577-0192. Perfect. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, John, for taking time out of your busy day. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys on the next episode.